I don't think I've ever heard anybody put it quite like this, but what we're gonna get, we're talking about, you, you know what? Let's, let's just roll, let's roll the tape. Let's get the video started. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. I've got a, a little something special out here for you. I've made another little discovery in my swing. I, I don't know if this will help all of you. It certainly has helped me. But what I'm going to talk about is my ass. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing this. So if you've been following along, you've been watching the videos, I'm trying to make the simplest swing I can make based on a whole conglomerate of different ideas from a bunch of different teachings and philosophies that I've messed with over the years. I've tried them out, I've tested them out, I've read about them, I've watched video after video, I've done everything I can and gone through all these swings and I'm kind of putting together and cobbling together my own little swing out of it that I think is built on sound principles and that has been getting me some really good results. Last week when I did a course vlog, I had some issues with my effort levels being too high. And as a result of that, some of my swings were a little bit disastrous and it can all be traced back to my effort levels being too high. I started getting my early extension again where I started coming into the ball a little bit. I was crossing the line at the top a little bit too much again. And I think that a lot of that is due to me trying to reach too far and putting in too much effort. I'm gonna put these up split screen so you can watch some of my swings as I talk because I get told that I talk way too much and this is a golf philosophy channel about trying to learn something. So I don't know what you guys are expecting when I stand up here and talk. There's gonna be a lot of talking, just get used to it. Sorry for the inconvenience, but on this split screen, you'll see I go from nine iron, I go to seven iron, and then I hit driver at the end of this. I want you to see some of the swing progressions, some of the things I'm working on, and notice anything different, especially in the down the line view. Now, a lot of my swing that I'm working on now, I would say the core value that I'm trying to work on, or the mantra that I have for this swing, is to simply keep trying to make a better circle. Each day that passes, I'm trying to make a better circle. But at the end of it, again, it's so simple that all I'm really trying to do is to make a circle. And I feel like if I can get the circle to be a better circle, that that's all I really need to focus on in order to get my swing to be better. And in an effort to do that out here practicing and working and grinding as I do week after week, day after day, one of the things that I happened to cross was this thought that if I anchored my butt in its position and just felt like I kept it where it was throughout the whole swing and didn't try to move it, that maybe, just maybe, it would act as a governor for my swing, number one. It would keep me from early extending and flipping at the ball, number two. And that at the end of the day, it might help me draw a better, more efficient circle. I'm gonna tell you about the part with my butt. Now, this could be your butt, so you don't have to think about my butt, but listen, there's a couple of different schools of thought. They used to teach you, uh, up until pretty recently to stick your butt way out and get your chest up and, and really have this arch in your back. It's really bad for your back. So now the ergonomic and the kinesthetic and the biomechanical proven, oh my God, all these words, the proven method that now people are moving toward a little bit is to tuck your hips under just a little bit and almost get just a little rounding to your back. That's the most modern way. But when I was out here swinging, I realized that my effort levels were affecting everything. They were affecting me across the top and they were also affecting how I was putting in effort into the ball. I was standing up and coming into the ball, still getting back to my early extension that I had kicked to the curb a while back and I thought I'd gotten rid of. But essentially, wherever I set up, I want to anchor my butt. I want to feel like it is in its place. I don't want to feel like I'm sitting in a trash can. No, no, no. I don't want to do that. But wherever I put my butt to start at a dress, I want to keep it there. But I don't really just want to keep it there because I need to use it as a counterweight, as my thumbnail suggests. I'll talk about that in a minute. But as I start to take it away, I'm just taking it away with my hands and arms and I'm just trying to make an on plane circle. I'm trying to draw a circle. As I do that, there's a little bit of speed that builds up here and the weight of my arms and club is starting to try and pull me this way. So I want to sink into it just a little bit more. I get a little bit more weight. I kind of get my butt moving back. And then as I start to build speed coming down, I have to get it further out because now it's speeding up and it's becoming heavier and heavier on the front end, trying to pull me more and more off the ball. So I have to sink into it even more to counterbalance that and maintain a really good circle. So as you watch these videos here, I'll put them back up right now. When you're watching these videos, take a look at my butt. Yeah, check it out. There it is in all its glory. Now you can't add weight 
to your butt unless you're eating a dozen donuts every hour on the hour, you could certainly add more weight to your butt and then maybe your butt wouldn't have to move. You really could anchor it and it could stay in the same place. But at the end of the day, you, you, you have to move the weight further away. So we've all seen those giant cranes where they're building a high rise in the city. And at the top of this giant erector set like post is the operator that's sitting way up there in the sky. And it's got the big boom arm with the cable and the hook that's gonna pick up the heavy load of steel beams or concrete blocks or whatever it is that they have to pick up. The heavier the load that they're gonna put on that boom arm, they have a slide weight on the back behind the, the operator's cabin that can either slide away to counterbalance a really heavy load or it can slide closer to the cabin for a lighter load. That helps them maintain their balance on top of that giant erector set perch. If they didn't have that weight that could slide away and help to counterbalance that, then the crane would topple over and snap that pole in half. So think about your butt like that sliding weight. You're not going to increase the weight, but you are going to move it away as you add more weight. The weight comes from the fact that you're accelerating the club and your arms, all that meat <laughs> swinging around and you're accelerating it. So as it accelerates, your butt has to move back as if it is pushing on the accelerator pedal to counterbalance the heavy weight being swung around at high speeds in front of you. If you didn't do that, you'd stand up out of it, you'd lose your spine angle, you'd have early extension, you might end up losing your balance and falling on your face. So it's essential that the butt actually moves away as the speed increases on the downswing which is adding weight to the front of your body. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. The swings that you have seen here on screen, both down the line and face on, I have not seen them at the time that I'm filming this portion of the video and talking to you. It could look absolutely no different. No different to the naked eye than my other swings. But the point of all this is basically that using that counterweight prevents me from engaging my lower body in a bad way because up until this point, anytime my lower body gets involved, it generally gets involved in, in the wrong way. Instead of being rotational, which is what everybody wants you to be, it acts more laterally. It starts to move up. I lose my spine angle and, and I start to come into the ball a little bit and it stalls me out and I have to flip at it. So all these things can be, for me at least, governed somewhat by keeping my butt back and using it as a counterweight and trying to really feel like I'm keeping it still or I'm at least deepening it, taking it away from the golf ball instead of letting it move into the golf ball. The other thing it does, again, it acts as a governor for my effort levels. I know that the, the, the big crucial part of this is keeping my butt either, like I said, in the same place or even allowing it to go back away from the golf ball. And so that means that any effort that I put into it, I have to maintain that balance and I can really go at it with my hands and arms and just my upper body and feel like my lower body does absolutely nothing except support and react to what the upper body is doing. And so that governs my effort levels to a certain extent. If I come out of balance and I feel like I'm falling all over the place, I know that I've engaged too much effort. Thanks so much for joining me today. That's it for the video. I appreciate all the comments. Leave me a thumbs up down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share the video, tell your friends, bring them all around. We're trying to grow the GTD channel. We are really, really close to 5,000 subscribers. We might even be at it by the time this video drops. So please share it around with your friends, social media, anybody that needs some help with their golf swing or that you see might be able to relate to this stuff out here. I really appreciate all the support. You guys are the best fans on YouTube and I will see you in the next video.